let's talk about some general site questions. So we'll leave the vignettes behind for a bit. I'm going to talk about a couple different things. One is understand the site. Another is understand the climate. Another is the regulatory environment. And then the last one is just kind of a little more in depth about thinking about soils and uh, foundations. <coughs> so there's a lot to say about this stuff, and we're only going to just touch the surface. But I think you start getting the idea. Um, first thing, surveys. I'm trying to understand the site. Survey is going to be one of those things that I'm going to use to understand the site. Uh, do I order the survey? The answer is no. Why do I not order the survey? Because contractually, it's the owner's responsibility. The owner is going to give you the site. That means they give you the survey. That means they give you the geotechnical report. That means they give you the environmental report. Uh, they also give you a program and a couple of other things. That's part of the contract. Um, so somebody else hands that to you. It's kind of a key, important sort of liability issue uh, that the survey is uh, done by others. Um, and uh, that's one of those things that uh, shows up on a couple of different exams. Uh, and it's possible that it would show up here. Uh, so who does it? Uh, the owner hires that. Um, when you talk about surveys, how do they measure in a survey? Decimal fee. Um, that site plans uh, are architectural and they're done in architectural measurements. Surveys are uh, engineering and they're done in decimal feet. Uh, you sometimes see them in other measurement systems, but almost always it's decimal feet. Um, the idea of benchmarked is that if I have a survey, it actually, uh, the way that surveyors do it, they don't uh, go back to um, the high water mark, uh, you know, somewhere in an ocean uh, to figure out a, a survey in Tulsa. Um, they're going to benchmark off of something that's already known. So everything is in relationship to something else. And you'll find that that's how surveys generally work. They're always about uh, describing where what this is in relationship to somewhere else. Survey is a legal document. Um, it looks different than architectural drawings because it is different. It is a legal document. It's a, uh, a different kind of thing that's useful to you, but it's not uh, of your sort of general world. Uh, topography, um, kind of understanding the site, that's something we just talked about it in the vignette, so I don't think I need to go into it, but that's something um, obviously is a huge part of uh, understanding uh, how the site's going to work. Um, what that really means is where does the water go? So like I said before, you do not want to get into a situation where you're making a proposal that says uh, the water was coming down and, and draining off to the uh, west, and now we're going to propose that it goes to the east. Um, that's just not believable. It's not doable uh, and will cause all sorts of problems. Um, th th you can imagine lots of kinds of questions that could ask that, right? It's sort of uh, how do we, how do you deal with a situation where that kind of thing uh, happens? Um, and so that's just, you just want to make sure that you're answering it in that way. Uh, special features is just, um, you'll often find in the questions, they'll, they'll sort of give you a bunch of information and then all of it will be red herrings because there's some special aspect to the site. So just parse the questions closely so that you know that you're not uh, uh, wasting time doing calculations or something else if it turns out there's no way to put a parking lot into that spot or whatever it happens to be. So special features is sort of a, a kind of concept that shows up a lot. Um, utilities. Uh, one of the things you'll find is when you're talking about site plans and surveys that the uh, it feels like there's a lot of flexibility about where, you know, I have a site plan, I can put the house anywhere, I can put the building anywhere. Well, I'm probably not. I'm probably going to really have to think about how the utilities are going to play into this. Uh, if I have two streets, where is the sewer system? Am I using a septic system? Well, if I'm going to use a septic system and I start thinking about that and the only place to do that is in a higher elevation than where I want to put the structure, uh, then that septic system is going to leach right into my basement. Well, that's no good, right? So understanding the utilities is, in fact, understanding site planning, right? It's a huge part of it. You cannot forget those. It's easy to imagine questions that could show up um, uh, about, uh, about utilities. Uh, soils, as I mentioned, uh, when the owner signs a contract with you, not only are they giving you the survey, but they're also giving you the geotechnical report. Uh, so geotechnical is anytime somebody's going onto the site, uh, 
either digging a big hole and doing a visual inspection or doing a boring where they auger down and sometimes it's called a split spoon where they'll take this sort of tube, they'll push that down in, pull it out, open up the, the tube um, and take a look at what the soil looks like. And from that, often just as a visual thing, but also just they can test it as well, but usually it's done visually, uh, they will say, all right, this part is uh, sandy soil uh, with a little bit of clay in it. Uh, this is uh, it's okay soil. Maybe you can get uh, 2,000 PSF off that pounds per square foot. Um, so the geotechnical report is where you're going to find all that information. Can you think about what else you'll find there? Well, water table height you'll find, uh, the uh, capacity of each of the different soil types, where the soil types start. Are they does the sandy soil uh, stop at five feet below grade, and then it becomes a, a combination of gra gravel and sand, uh, and then down maybe at 15 feet it becomes bedrock or something like that. But each one of those will have a different capacity, different pounds per square foot capacity they can respond to, and that's something you definitely want to know about uh, and be able to analyze. If you've never spent any time with a geotechnical report, with a soil boring report, um, before you take the exam, I would definitely find one. You, you probably have one in an office you're working at, uh, but you can also just find an example one online and just spend some time going through it um, and uh, do what you can um, to sort of understand that. And then environmental concerns, there's two different aspects to the environmental concerns. I'm not really gonna talk about environmental stuff right now, but um, uh, it's important to know that this is sort of understanding that. Again, um, if you have toxins on the site, that uh, uh, report is gonna start to, environmental report that the that the owner gives you is going to tell you quite a bit of information about um, what's uh, what's on the site. You don't, you're not part of that. You're just reading the report and responding to the recommendations. Uh, the reason for that is for liability things. But the other environmental issue that shows up when you're sort of understanding the site is what are the opportunities? How does the orientation work? How do I? Are there things that I can do here? Do I have a really solid wind pattern that I can? Uh, get energy from? Like, what are the other opportunities? Those are all kinds of things that you can imagine questions coming on uh, about how to uh, move forward. Blackspectacles.com is the home of online learning for architecture and design. You can go to blackspectacles.com, kind of get a taste of this online ARE prep curriculum we built with AI Chicago and Mike, covering all seven sections of the exam. And there are free tutorials in every one of those courses. As a part of today's session, you're eligible for coupon codes for your ARE membership. 15% off the monthly membership and 30% off an annual membership all through the end of the month. And we're doing group memberships. So if you want to get one for your firm or you want your firm to buy one for you, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash business or just email me. We're running a promotion again where business memberships are 15% off as well. Our next webinar is going to be different. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of have a no holds barred Q&A session with Mike. It's not specific to an exam. Whatever exam you're working on, you have a question, you've tried to solve a vignette and you don't like your answer, you're unsure about your answer, put it in a PDF and email it to me. And what we'll do is we're just going to take them first come first serve and everyone who submits them will take an hour and Mike will answer them one after the other. So it'll be a cool event because if you actually have a question, you can get a real answer. And if you're just want to see what other people are kind of wrestling with, it'd be a great way to learn from other people's questions and problems and so on. So that's going to be on April 22nd.